question is, if the wise women, uh, and the oil represented the Holy Spirit, right? Follow me. If the oil represents the Holy Spirit, then the question I ask is, if you, uh, can the Holy Spirit be bought? He cannot. Right? Most of us agree. Can he be bought? Or can he be sold? Okay, so if he, if he can't be bought and he can't be sold, then a person of wisdom, why would he tell the other five virgins who are foolish, go buy to them that sell? And the other thing is, um, if you can't buy the Holy Spirit and you can't sell the Holy Spirit, but yet the wise virgins told them to go buy from the people that sell, then the other question I ask is how come, if the oil represents the Holy Spirit, how can the wise virgin say there won't be enough? Can the Holy Spirit ever run out? Never. Why? It's because the Holy Spirit is God and God is limitless. He has, he has unlimited resources. I mean, he just spoke. Let there be light and there light was and light never stopped. Think about it. When he spoke, let the tigers roam the earth. There is still tigers. Let the fish come out. There is still fish. Let the trees grow upon the earth. There's still trees and there's still grass. They didn't stop. And so if that tree never stopped growing from the moment that Adam was in the Garden of Eden till today, we still have trees. So obviously everything God does is limitless and untapped. Hmm. Right? And so what does this oil represent? And how come? And what does the lamp? I'm going to tell you a couple of things. I'm, about, I'm going to uh, get you to a place. And we're talking about wise investments. I want to tell you like this. There's a saying, if anybody's ever taken microeconomics in your life, yes, you know, microeconomics is different than macroeconomics, but let's talk about microeconomics. And microeconomics is when they study financial decisions of an individual or a, a, a microcosm of a small uh, aspect of a company. Uh, and so what they say is this, in simple terms, is uh, everything, you know, everything in life, there is a price. Isn't it true? Yeah. Everything in your life. And we often think that um, life has uh, decisions that we make, there is no price. But there is a price for every decision you make. It's a give and take. That's, that's economics. There is a trade-off between what you give. I'll give you a great example. Uh, look at your uh, phone. Most of you have this thing called a smartphone. Whatever brand you have, is not. it doesn't matter. Okay? But let's say that you work 10 hours uh, per hour. And this phone costs you 600 bucks. So for you to own this phone, you have to work how many hours? $10 an hour? 60 hours. And so for you to own this, that means the company that you work for that's willing to pay you $10 an hour, it would take, you would pay part of your effort, your intellect, your wisdom, your creativity, your time, it costs you 60 hours of your life to buy this phone. It doesn't matter if you can sense it, um, but there is a price that you pay for this phone. So when you invest in things, you have to have wisdom that the things that you are investing in will have a rate of return, or ROI. Well, in my lifetime, I thought about becoming a stockbroker, so anyway, okay? And preaching is God's call, but... So, you have to understand that in your life, there are investments that you do. Sometimes, if you know anything about the stock market, the greatest investor, they say, is a man by the name of Warren Buffett. He's a multi, multi-billionaire. And he says that most of the time is long-term investment. Put money in blue chip stocks like Coca-Cola uh, and just forget about it. And look at it once every 5, 10, 20 years. And the earlier you start, the more you have. Because there's one thing that you would never get back. It is time. And that is true with most Christians.
they go to church and it's like they just sit there and being a Christian, they sit there, but they have never had an investment into their spiritual life. These women, these women are Christians. How we know, uh, it is a representation because in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, uh, it talks about the bride of Christ. The reason why it says virgin is because the blood of Jesus has washed them. And I hear people say things like this, say, well, though the foolish women weren't true believers. Well, that's technically not really true because, uh, uh, because that represents that they were washed with the blood of Jesus and that the Bible says that though our skin be like scarlet, they will be white as snow. And the Bible says this, that uh, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. And if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Are you with me today? Amen. Okay, I'm going somewhere. You're going to get a revelation here. And so these women are going to church. That word lamp there is the word of God. And so everywhere they go, they got the word of God with them. Psalms 119, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh, in Psalms 119, it also says this, at the entrance of your word, it gives light and understanding to the simple. Wow. And so these women are carrying around the word of God. But there's something that is missing on well, five of them. Half of them carry extra oil. And probably people say, well, it's the Holy Spirit. No, uh, uh, that's, that's not a really true because if it's the Holy Spirit, who can buy, who can sell him? Right? And the second thing is, if I had the Holy Spirit, my, the Holy Spirit living in me is more than enough, not just for me, but also for you. True? So what is this here? And so here they are, they're going to church, they're waiting for the bride, and all ten of them began to slumber. That tells you something. There are times in our life, brothers and sisters, no matter what, it could be uh, when you're single, it could be when you're married, it's, it could be when you're, you have children, young children, and that you're, sometimes you just get sleepy. So, oh yeah, new mothers are always sleeping. And new fathers are mostly sleeping. Okay? And true. I remember, you hear me say it all the time, that for the first six months when our babies were born, I felt like I was underwater. Right? And after six months, you kind of come up for a breath of air. And, and especially if you've never been a parent before, the first one really just messes you up. And you, you know, you just walk around and you're a, a zombie. Could you imagine if you had to go to surgery and you were like that? As the zombie, please don't operate on me. Right? And here are these women that are going through life and they're waiting for their king, just like many people in church. They walk and they hold the Bible, they open it. But most people will only believe in God enough to get by. See, the oil here is in Proverbs 23 and 23. Can you read it? Here, what does the oil represent, everybody? What? By the truth. What? By the truth. And do not sell it. And also by wisdom and instruction and understanding. See, most people come to church and they just want to have ice cream and cake and have a little bit of tickle in their ear and jump up and down and get high up and say, oh, praise me, you move me, you cry me, but they have never traded or invested in the truth. They come to church and they carry the Bible. They have the label of Christ, but only enough to get by and what is convenient Just imagine how hard a man or a woman or a married couple work so they can provide for their family. When you look at the economics of that, there is a lot of investment that goes into raising a family. There's a lot of investment that goes into having a good marriage. But at times, you feel tired, you feel sleepy like these virgins. There's a lot that goes in 
But see, most people, they only want to see, you know, they invest and they want to see a return immediately. They want micro, mi microwave popcorn. Three minutes and bam. Right? But life, anything worth, uh, worth investing in uh, requires effort and time. See, most people just want to rub on the Bible like a genie and say, God, if I do these things, just give to me. But they don't ever want to buy the truth because when you buy something, that means you have to give up something. Oh. See, when you go work for your car, you are giving up your time to go work to make money to pay for that car. True? That's why when you hang out with foolish people, your wisdom and your time, you will never get back. <laughs> Think about it. And I know this is tough because people say, oh, Pastor, no. It's because the older I've gotten, what I realize is I don't have time for foolishness. Seriously. I'm a 46-year-old man, and every day I wake up, I feel like uh, God's going to come back tomorrow. I feel like, Lord, I'm running out of time to do the things that I need to do. I was like that at 26, actually. I ran like my hair's on fire. And there are some people, they treat the walk of God and their life in God just like that. They just come and hold their lamp and say, but they never really had a and exchange and buy and they they don't really buy truth they don't really buy wisdom they don't really buy knowledge and understanding they just go to church and see there is going to be a moment for all of us slumber can I tell you you know me I'm very transparent pretty much what you see is what you get I'm pretty much the same all the time but there has been my walk in life that I've gone through areas where this mind has been fighting and warring, and I get tired, I get weary, I get dry. And you know what really helped me when times of God come? It is that extra time and investment that I've bought through the years of spending time with God. See, it's not enough, brothers and sisters, to have a marriage or a relationship with someone and that you think that it's good, that you only speak to them on Sundays. Try that, Pastor Danny, and just speak to your wife, Lon, just on Sundays. Try that. And yet, and yet we, uh, as most leaders, we strive so hard to, to, to get people motivated, to get into a relationship. And what we're trying to do is tell you that there will be a moment when your opportunity of celebration is about to come. But because you're lacking the truth, and you're lacking wisdom, you're lacking knowledge, and you're lacking understanding, that opportunity to celebrate with everybody else, they're going to shut the door. Oh God, don't let that be me. Because the foolishness begins to come out. Why? Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Am I bought into the truth and the wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of the things of God? Am I really uh, trading? And here we often think that buying here is a monetary value. Right? Money. If somebody were to pull out money and, and we give them. No. These women, the wise women, were not talking about buying because there's a price you pay for everything. What they were buying was telling them is, you know how you buy wisdom and understanding and knowledge? He said you buy it by spending your time and training and seeking out people that is selling or, or giving of their time to tell. Oh, that's deep, huh? See, uh, just think about it. Are we really seeking out people that are wise, that can teach us some things? Are we listening to the words of God being preached or being read? And are we applying those things in our life and investing in our time and say, oh, I don't want to just go through this side of my ear and go out the other side and, and hit somebody? 
Or are we having what we old people, uh, older people would say, pitchfork Christianity? That pastor, that was real. <laughs> or, you know, that was for her. Scoop it on over. You know, I, it's funny when I, and sometimes I go preach and then you see I'm preaching and the wife would look, mm, mm. <laughs> and the husband said, mm, mm, mm. How are we? And so these women, brothers and sisters, you have to understand in the time of Christ, if a lot of times people didn't have money, they would barter. That word bartering means that they would trade sheep or goats or honey or, or, or clothes or, or whatever they have and they would give. And so these women were saying, you know what, we made the investment of our time and our uh, moment to buy our wisdom and understanding. And when that time comes and we needed it, we were able to pour it in. Brothers and sisters, don't get, up, get caught up in this hype of this world that everything now is instant. I know we got instant things, instant texting, instant email, Instagram. I know, we got it. Right? Right now on this little smartphone, you and I can, can look at pictures from all around the world and call people. I was speaking to a pastor in Brazil while I was driving 60 miles an hour down the road with yesterday. And I thought to myself, you couldn't do that 20 years ago. You barely could do it five years ago. But the convenience of being a Christian is and learning and getting understanding and wisdom is there every day. Are we willing to trade and invest into the truth and the wisdom and understanding and the knowledge so that one day that maybe just in case we are dry, must, uh, just in case we fell asleep because we're tired and light, and then when the time comes, the blessing comes, boom, the door is open, we're going in. Because I want to ask you a question. And since people mostly understand money, and we talk a lot about it, Jesus used a lot of analogies with money. If somebody came up and said to you, I want to give you $10 million, you have to ask the question is, why should they give it to you? I have to think that about myself. Do I have the wisdom and do I have the truth and the understanding and the knowledge to know what the plans are? Think about it for a minute. You know, I, I heard a story about a pastor who is a, um, he teaches many other pastors. He has a mega church, like huge. He was considered one of the, he broke every record. He became one of the fastest growing churches in America during his time. He still is pastor in the East Coast. And he, there were some friends of mine that attended this teaching that he was doing. He walked in and he was in slacks. He had a, a, a sports jacket on. And most of the people there were young ministers, and some of them were you know, in t-shirts, and they were in, you know, in shorts, and some, some of them, their hair dyed green or whatever, and it was just like, my friends who were in their early 30s, mid 30s, they said, man, we felt old press. Okay. And this man in there started laughing at him, and he looked like, you know, very, and he says to, and my friend says that everybody in the room was laughing, but I noticed the pastor was not laughing. He said, if somebody came into this room today and had $10 million to give for the work of the kingdom of God, who would they give it to, you or me? And people just start laughing and say, you're so old, pastor, you just old-minded. No, it's why is nobody is going to give $10 million to someone who looks like a fool. These women that were able to go into the marriage celebration and God was going to bless them, it was the women that were wise. See, wisdom will always give you opportunities. Wisdom 
will get you at the table. You might not be able to uh, uh, stay there, but somewhere along the line, people will talk to you. Brother, sister, I want to encourage you like this. When you come to church, when you are a believer in Christ, don't just beat the Bible and say, I'm a Christian, but really learn what the Word of God says. Really live that life. Look at what the book of Proverbs says there. I want to give you a couple things. You know what the word foolish means in Greek? It means moras. That's where we get the word moron. <laughs> it is. M-O-R-O-S. It's a word called foolishness in chapter 25 of Matthew. It's a word called moras. It means foolish, impious, godless. You know what the word impious is? I looked it up in the dictionary. It means lacking reverence for God's laws, commands, and God. It means disrespectful. We can live the word of God and just do anything we want. No, I'm speaking to myself, brothers and sisters, that I have to look every day and say, am I doing everything I can? Am I investing in the truth? Am I listening to the word of God? Am I hanging around with people that will give me wisdom? Is the people an investment? Is my time going to give me a rate of return that will be eternal? Or are we doing things that are just spinning our wheels? One of the greatest things that I was taught is you never go wrong investing in the kingdom of did you know that you would never go wrong investing your time to connect with other people? You never do. But we spend so much of our time investing in things. Look what Proverbs 1, 5 says. A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Look what else Proverbs, I love Proverbs. It says in Proverbs 8, 12, 14, I, wisdom, Dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Proverbs 12, 15. Proverbs 11, 11 uh, 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, there was some things that was presented to me this past week. The first thing I did was I prayed and I seek counsel. Brothers and sisters, don't just go to church, but seek counsel. Don't just go to church and just say, I'm here. I just mark it off. My conscience is free. But really buy the truth. Amen. Buy wisdom. What is that buying? Is it that you mean I can pay for it? Yes. You pay with it with your time to invest in that. You pay for it with your fasting. You pay for it with your uh, reading and listening to word. You pay for it when you hang around godly people. You know, as remember when we were younger, our parents would say, you know, if you want to be a good student, sit in the front, hang around good students. Right? You right? They always tell you, don't, don't hang out with the ones that always get an F. Right? You know, sit in the front. Even the teachers tell you, you know, sit in the front. Why? Think about it. Anybody, we have teachers here in our, our, our church. Just imagine, usually the best student is the one sits in the front. Right? Yes. Sit in the front. Pay attention. Buy in. And so here is a story of these women. And five of them went to church. And five of them went to church. But there's something that happened. They all had their lamps in the word of God. They all carried it with them. But one of them had just enough to get by. They never invested. There are some of us sometimes like that. And I'm not trying to get on you and discourage you. But I want to encourage you to spend more time with the things of God. Hang out with godly people. Hang out and just say, hey, 
How can we hang out, be together, listen to words of affirmation, listen to words of God that will speak truth into your life and don't be afraid. Don't hang on to crazy stuff. And stop hanging on to crazy people. Let go. Let go. You know, it's funny, I was listening to Victoria Osteen here in Lakewood. And she said something. She said that we used to, you know, they used to catch monkeys. Oh, the old way of catching monkeys was using a barrel. Right? I'm like, a barrel? He said, yeah, they used to trap these monkeys in a barrel. And it was real easy. They'd fill the barrel up with a bunch of bananas. And then cut a hole just big enough for the for the monkey to put its hand in the bear would grab the, the banana. And the monkey would grab the banana, a fistful of banana, right? And it was trying to move, but it won't move because it can't get its fist out because the fist is too big for the hole. And so the monkey wouldn't let it go. It would just let it go. It can go get uh, bananas from other places, but it wanted to be easy. You understand? There are a lot of times in our life we want things easy, and those things that are easy in our life are usually the things that trap us. Oh. We want to have an easy church. We want to, Lord, just bless me. I'm, I'm good. You know what? We want to have a, uh, our marriage. We don't want to invest in it. We don't want to invest in people because it's hard. Oh, you know, we want, we want to go to church where it's comfortable, and we don't want to do anything. Just, just put our hand in there. I just want what's mine. You see? But freedom and joy are the things that we strive for and work for. And you know what's crazy? And this is what's crazy. Because I thought about those moments. Right? I really thought about that moment. And I thought, is the devil making a monkey out of me? Am I holding on to things because I want it easy? And yet there are bananas hanging all over the place. And I'm not willing to climb the tree. But I'm willing because it's holding a whole lot of bananas. <laughs> Think about it in your life. I thought about that. I'm like, what an easy, what a silly illustration. But it's so true. We want what's easy sometimes. And these women that were wise, said it's not easy to carry my lamp and extra oil. Because there was a price I had to pay for it. But the foolish one said, I got it now, I ain't gonna worry about it. And what happened is they couldn't get in to the joy and the truth that is in God. See, here's, that's why I, I, I talked to some people at Council Pass, I don't want to be a Christian no more. I'm serious. There are people like, I don't want to go to church no more. It doesn't work. I said, really? So you're going to go back to what's easy. You go back to that barrel full of uh, bananas and you just stick it in there and it's trapping you the whole time. You know how many people that I've talked to have said, brother, you, get, you need to get to church. Just come to church. But I like, no. You know, I, I don't want to waste my time. It's only two hours. A Sunday. But they just they get trapped by the illusion that it's easy. You know, think about it. There was these five women that was willing to carry extra and it cost them something. Oftentimes we think it's money that they bought. No, they were saying, you buy the things of God with your life. You buy it with the investment you spend with Him. You buy it with the fasting that you go. You buy it with spending time to listen to His Word. You buy it by opening your eyes to His Word. And because there's going to become a time that you and I might fall asleep because life does that to us. But then we... When that moment comes, we're not going to miss when the door is open to our blessing. 
You know, remember this uh, last week I, or a week or so ago, I said, I want you this week to wake up and just to think about all the things that God did for you unexpectedly. Remember that? Right? And you know what's crazy? When I think about it, bro, brother Dan, I thought to myself, some of the things that God blessed me with, I wasn't even doing too good. I mean, I was, Lord, I wasn't really like on fire for God. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't fasting 40 days. I was just living life. I'd be honest with you, I was probably slipping. And God still said, no, you know why? Because I had an extra oil. And I didn't miss it. And people say, that's grace. Yes, that's grace, but grace is for sin. These women were not dirty. Oh, I just want to say this. <laughs> this virgin represents pure. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But oh, that's because, no, grace is reserved for sin. These virgins had no blemishes. That's why they were virgins. And there are times that both the wise and the foolish will slumber. But when the time came, the wise said, oh, I'm glad I invested my time. I'm glad I bought my truth. I'm glad I got my wisdom. I'm glad I bought my understanding. I remember when I was coming up in the church, every time my pastor would teach, I was in the church. And now they don't teach anymore. They're retired, can't get a hold of them. They're busy. Guess what? The people that were with me and went to the same church, they didn't get everything I got because I wanted it. I invested. And people would say, oh, you go to church too much. That's foolishness. I said, no. You know what? Thank God. Because the same things they taught in the church, and I got the truth. Now that I'm using it, that's why my marriage is successful. That's why my fathering is successful. Because I grew up without a father. That's why my leadership is successful. Everything I learned, I thank God for that. And the wisdom they taught me and how to connect with people. I learned that through the church. And who is selling the oil? People like me who preaches to you every week. Don't just listen and go out the other door. How about people that you know that are successful husbands? How about the people you know that are successful wives? How about people you know that have raised children? Ask them. You know, it's funny, there was an opportunity that came before me this week. I remember sitting there, I'm like, man, this, I'm walking on the water in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and there is no land in sight. Lord, what am I going to do? I had to seek for counsel, seek for wisdom. Can a brother get a life preserved? And wisdom would tell you that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. It's funny, somebody told me, said, brother, don't, don't get in a hurry. I said, don't worry, I ain't got the money to get in the hurry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it's God, it's God. And so, I'm going to ask you this. Invest wisely. And I want to tell you areas that you can invest. Anybody love the inside trading investments? You know? Oh, can you give me a stock tip? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I can. Start investing. But I can tell you in the spirit, things invest. Give of your time, your money, your creativity, your intelligence to God's house. Because the Bible says that he will never forget your labor of love that you do towards his name. Amen. That's why I'm like, for me, when it comes to the church, I'm, I'm good. People come over to my house and have me, and I ask them, we're in truth. No, you're not. What you ought to understand is when you come, I already know God's going to pay me back somehow. See, people don't understand that. They just want to see what's there. See, people say, oh, Pastor, you're always buying my lunch or whatever. I love to because I know I'm giving it to God. And God will never owe any man. Because what, you hold on to your little thing? No. I said, Lord, my little thing, I'm going to invest in you because if you can take five loaves of bread and two fish and feed 5,000 men, whoo, man. My $20 lunch for you, I can buy more than five loaves of bread. Secondly, invest in 
some people. Invest in people. Humble yourself and invest in them. Spend time with them. Sometimes your presence is all they need. You know that? You know you being here is sometimes so encouraging. Because just by your presence makes others feel good. Now, there's some people you don't want to be around. I'm not talking about those people. <laughs> but invest. God will give you wisdom to know who to invest in. And learn from them. Did you know you can learn something from anybody? I learn from my little kids. I learn from little children. Sometimes I see the little babies. They can, it can be hot, and you know, it can be long, and they're still smiling. Right? And I thought to myself, man, they got no worry in the world. I got all these worries. Learn from other people. It was funny. Yesterday I was with a, a man, and I had a conversation with him, and he says, he said, he said LT, go home and play with your kids. You don't go to this church. He goes, brother, go home and play with your kids. And I thought to myself, him reminding me of that. And you know what I did? I went home and played with my kids. Because I want to invest in them something I never got invested into because my dad died when I was two. I never had a dad. And I thought to myself, my eldest one is 14. Four more years, she'll be in college. And God forbid, four more years after that, she'll be out. And, four, and then hopefully, God comes back before she gets married. <laughs> Don't be foolish and just come and have just enough. You know, it's funny, I heard. Bishop Jake said something so funny. He said, I hear these people say, oh, if I can just get a little old shack in the corner of heaven, you know, I'll be satisfied. He goes, man, all the hell I had to go through, I don't want no shack. <laughs> you know, think about it. Our mentality, you know, that tells me that, that, that you just barely get by. I don't want to make it into heaven with the skin of my teeth. Think about it. There's people like that. I just want to barely make it in. Why? You're going to spend eternity in a corner of heaven in a shack? But then, think about it. Don't be foolish. By truth. By understanding. By knowledge. And by wisdom. Now you have that story different that I hear it all the time. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. I said, man, you can't buy the Holy Spirit. You can't sell the Holy Spirit. And not only that, the Holy Spirit can't run out. So how can these wise women don't give? I mean, if I had the Holy Spirit, I'd give it to you. Right? But why do these wise women tell those foolish women to go buy? It's because that means spend your time wisely and invest in eternity. Invest. Most of the time, we just want to invest in things that we see, but invest in eternity. You know, even this week, my wife and I have been getting our finances together and looking at investment and looking at retirement and all these things. And, you know, maybe there's 25 years left, uh, uh, you know, my working life or whatever. And I, I want to be able to do these things. And, and, you know, it looks kind of scary. And the guy told me, he said, hey, $5 or $5 million, it's still valuable. Brothers and sisters, guess what? One hour, five minutes, ten minutes of your time with God, it's valuable. You might not be able to spend it like me uh, all the time or others, but spend time with God. Amen. Read his word and get you around people that will push you into your destiny, drag you kicking and screaming. There have been times where people in my life had to drag me kicking and screaming and crying all the way into my purpose. I didn't see it, but I came anyway. I came anyway. Let us say.